Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. And this week, using a capo. Is it really cheating? Over the last few months, there have been a few comments pop up on social media that I found interesting. I mean, social media invariably yields some interesting comments and takes on the world, but one particular theme which developed in regard to guitar stuff at the very least did kind of catch me off guard, and that is, why on earth am I using a capo? After all, just learn to play the track in the correct key. Now, I'll admit, it was a little bit of a head-scratcher to start off with. I mean, first and foremost, I'm pretty sure I know how to play in all three keys. But aside from anything else, I'm not really much of a prolific capo user. And the moment I do start using one, I'm essentially accused of cheating. Which kind of did get me thinking. Why do we use capos, and are we guilty of using them as a crutch? Now firstly, for those uninitiated, a capo, derived from the Italian word capotasto, literally translating as head of the fretboard, is essentially a way of moving the nut around your guitar to change the key in which you're playing in. They're incredibly common on acoustic guitars, for reasons we'll come on to in a second, but arguably less common on electric guitars, which I think, judging from the comments of social media anyway, is where people get a little bit angsty about seeing them being used. Now, I've spoken about him in the past, but one of my favourite musicians of all time is a guy called John Martin. Incredible, incredible, kind of tortured songwriter, but more for the purposes of this video, a truly masterful guitar player whose technique has heavily influenced my own over the years, especially in regard to using my fingers on my picking hand. Now, this version of a track called May You Never, possibly his most famous track, recorded live at the BBC in 1973 for the Ogro Whistle Test, which in hindsight was probably, at least on the DVD, the retrospective DVD collection later on, was the first time I would see anyone using a capo. For the video, for that particular version anyway, he's capoed at the fourth fret, but in drop D tuning, essentially putting him in the key of F sharp. But because of that low D string, low F sharp string in this case, he's able to use open D and open A chord shapes. Now all of that makes it sound infinitely more complex than it actually is. Essentially, he's in drop D tuning, but capoed at the fourth fret to knock it up a few keys to put it into a place which is more comfortable for him to sing, more typical and familiar for his voice and his vocal range, which principally is the main reason that anyone would use a capo. Existing chord shapes, chord shapes that you're familiar with, simply played in a different key and a different place on the neck. It's interesting to see that in later years, John would start capoing at the second fret, just accommodating for the shift in his vocal range over the years. Of course, typically your voice gets lower the older you get. I guess in theory, could he have transposed it, played it with bar chords? Yes, I guess, but not only would it have made it a total nightmare to play, of course may never being so reliant on kind of bouncing off open strings and open chord shapes, but it would have totally killed and changed the vibe of the track. In which case, using a capo is really the only option.
While using a capo may solve an issue of practicality, by simply not being able to play something elsewhere on the neck, something which is often taken for granted about a capo is its ability to fundamentally change the sound of a guitar part. Now, for example, Terra Firma, the track you just heard at the start of today's video, taken from Cardinal Black's debut album January Came Close, plug plug, links in the description box, etc, etc, is in the key of F sharp minor, and as such you can see me capoed at the second fret. Now, fundamentally, the chords revolve around D major, B minor, and F sharp minor, all chords that are very easy to play, but to my ear at least don't sound anywhere near as good as if you just cap out the second fret and play open shapes, kind of transposing it to C major, A minor, and E minor. Not only does playing with open chords give me access to that more pretty John Martin-esque kind of open chord stuff that we were talking about earlier, but playing with a capo or playing open chords sounds fundamentally different to playing bar chords. This weight and a clarity and a resonance to open strings that is just arguably not with bar chords. And as such, for a track that veers between soft, quiet melodic sections and huge fuzzed out outros and guitar solos, playing with a capo and thus open strings, or effectively open strings, just gives me a broader palette of colours with which to paint. Now in this next video I'm going to be playing the verse section of Terra Firma, one without a capo and one with a capo with open shapes and hopefully you hear the difference. <laughs> Now, if you needed any proof that using a capo wasn't cheating, you need to look no further than any number of the incredible musicians who have been heavily reliant on capos over the years. I mean, to be honest, it would probably be marginally quicker to list musicians that haven't been seen with a capo, but the ones which immediately spring to mind, of course, being Albert Collins, Johnny Marr, Chris Stapleton, Bruce Springsteen, Paul Simon, James Taylor, Lindsey Buckingham, Bob Dylan, John Mayer, Eric Clapton, Pete Townsend, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, and of course, probably the most prolific capo user in the world, Keith Richards. Also interesting to think about any number of the iconic musical moments which have been heavily reliant on the use of a capo. Wonderwall, Hotel California, Here Comes the Sun, Free Falling, The Chain, Fire and Rain, and Don't Think Twice It's Alright, being just the first few examples which come to mind. So why is there this negative perception around capos? After all, easy transposing, cool chord voicings, and a totally unique sound in some respects are doing a very good job of fighting the capos corner, but undoubtedly there are those out there who don't use them in such creative ways, and maybe do rely on them to simply not worry about learning other chord shapes. Who needs other chord shapes when you can just move your nut up and down the neck, or maybe use them to avoid learning to play in other keys, at which point I guess you could make a strong argument that using one is cheating. Or if not cheating, maybe that's too strong a word, simply not using your guitar to its fullest potential, which I guess is sad. But if you are using one to augment your playing, or simply open up other areas of creativity that you otherwise wouldn't have accessed, they're amongst the most interesting and useful tools that you will ever come across in regard to guitar. And let's be honest, even if you're not, even if you're just using one because, let's be honest again, playing an F major chord is quite hard for a while, who cares? It's only rock and roll. As ever, I'm Chris Buck, you're watching Friday Fretworks, thank you very much for watching, please hit the bell and subscribe, and I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers guys, take care, I'll see you soon. Is this just a game that we're playing on? Give me the answer, girl. I want you to help me, girl, to find my feet.
Cause I can't taste nothing sweet no more And there's a river in my soul Yeah, it runs all the way through, yeah And I'm watching and I'm waiting And I'm tied up in blue over you